Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. Today I'm starting a brand new series of videos. Uh, I'm on holidays now and I'm going to make a bunch of videos in this series. And it's all to do with global war. Here, we'll just take a look at the label there. Da 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 da! Global war! 1936 to 1945. Okay, so the first uh, set of videos that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, introduce all of the nations. Uh, what I mean by that is to introduce all the pieces that I got for all of na the nations. Because in this game, there's no set pieces for it. Um, you're expected to go find pieces. So like you use your Axis and Allies pieces and you'll use pieces from, um, from historical board gaming. They make a lot of pieces. But you can't just buy them from one place or another because all of the pieces aren't there at one place or another. You know, like you could probably buy them from those two places, but you could even go further than that. You could buy them from uh, three or four different places. There's other places on the internet. And so um, you'll find a few places for each of the nations that I use here. Uh, you might not see all of them for Germany here. We're gonna do Germany first, but you might see more from other places like getting them from Shapeways or, or wherever, right? Um, one of the things that I found most intimidating about this game and why it took me so long to get into it was because I didn't know uh, how to put the game together. It's kind of vague when you look at it. So you really have to explore it and that's really why I wanted to start here is because uh, I want to show people how to get into this game, um, what you need and, and where to find it because that way it took me months to research this kind of stuff and, and so I'm going to tell you what I know and I can tell you I haven't played this game yet but I've researched it a lot and I, I, I do know uh, for the most part how to find the things that you need. So let's just start on Historical Board Gaming's website here. Let's move the, the camera over here. Um, let's take a look. Okay so um, here, here we've got uh, the front page of Historical Board Gaming's website. So what you'll want to do first is you'll want to go to Global War here. And you see this pop-up menu and then go down to down rules, Download Rules for Global War. And then here it says Needed Units for Game. So then you'll go to that. And then there you go, there's the recommended pieces. Now I don't know how accurate this is. I know some of it is not accurate. Um, like here you'll see... Uh, Coastal artillery, or not not coastal artillery, when we get down to the subs. Um, so I don't know if all these, uh, you need all the pieces that it says you need here. Um, but I, 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 uh, I based most of what I did on, on this and I tried to extrapolate. Like I've played lots of games before and so, uh, and I could see in my mind um, where the game would go, uh, this particular game. And I think it's fairly close. Uh, like they might, there, there might be too many um, French battleships, you know what I mean? Uh, you maybe not need that many French battleships. But I mean, this is a pretty good starting point right here. I can tell you what you don't need, okay? So here, torpedo boat destroyer and coastal submarine. Um, you do not need four of each. Uh, you don't need them for any of the nations because what the what those things are oh look at us here i i i missed you there i wasn't looking at the camera sorry about that okay so torpedo boat destroyer that's tbd and coastal sub you do not need four of each of those like it says uh because what those are are le boats that were left over from world war one and uh you can't buy them in the game the only ones that you get are the ones that are in the opening setup so let's just take a look at germany here their opening setup. I just gotta grab the card here. So, like you take a look here. Um, there is a coastal submarine, a torpedo boat destroyer, and that's it. For 1936, you only need one of each of those things. That's it. You can't buy them, so why would you need more? But let's take a look at the 1939 setup because you want to be able to play either setup, right? So there's a coastal sub, there's a torpedo boat destroyer, and well, that looks like it, right? So that's all you're ever going to need is one torpedo boat destroyer and one coastal sub for Germany. Um, so there's no need to, like they, they come in packs of five. Uh, they Historical Board Gaming has recently put out 
a set of, of units for 1936 and you have to buy them in sets of five but why would you need five of those you can't buy them unless um uh, next year in in 2019 they are going to update the rules on this like this is the second update of the rules that we're working on right now and uh, they're going to update them again uh, in a year from now the map will probably be updated and everything so unless they're planning on changing the setups and i don't see them radically changing those setups you're not going to need any more than that so when you're making your uh when you're when you're buying the units for the game Try to match those two units for sure. Um, if you're like me and you can paint the pieces, then you know, like you just get five German ones, and then you know you see how many Italian ones you need, and so you you paint them in Italian brown, right? Um, anyway, so that's where you start. You you start uh, there, and it'll you know look it'll there's markers and everything. I, that's not that's not accurate right there. I can tell you that right now. Um, and chips and dice. So you probably have a lot of chips and dice already. And so there you go. There's there's uh, there's the neutrals and the free French and you know like the, it just goes on and on, right? Um, there's the technologies that they have. And so uh, what I did uh, with each of these, like I got five of each of these, except for France. Like uh, I don't see France is having a whole lot of money. They do better than they do in Global Forty, but um, they don't uh, they don't do that well in, or sorry, the, the, they do better in this game. Um, uh, and same with Italy. Italy doesn't make much money in this game. So you, you may not need as many pieces, you know, um, but you can start with some and then decide, okay, you know what, I need to have more of them, right? Anyway, so let's look here. Let, let's go to, well, actually, let's, let's stay here for a second. Let's go back to, um, let me show you where to start here. That's what I was going to do. So let's go. What you, what you want to do is go to the top right there where it says sale, sale, sale. And if you click view all, then you don't have to keep changing pages. So here is where you start uh, because these things are all on sale. And um, like here, there, there's you can get American and British units there. That's a really good place to start. There's Russian units here. And, but we're doing Germany right now. So what you do, you click on that and you look at this. It's only $7.95. It's, it's regularly $12.95, right? And, and you get a lot of these pieces. Now, I'm assuming that you're like me and that you have Global 40 uh, access and analyze. And so you've got all of those pieces because you have to have them. You, you can't just start. Uh, it would cost you thousands if you didn't have them, put it that way. Um, so you start there and you can see all of the things that you get in there. Like you start with light tanks, uh, you get light tanks, uh, you get some self-propelled artillery, um, you get, uh, medium tanks, although you have medium tanks and axis and allies, tank destroyers, armored cars, uh, the trucks you get in there. Um, so you're going to get a whole bunch of units that, that you didn't start, that you didn't, uh, have already. What I did was I bought two of these. Um, two of these things right here, two of these sets, and that's a good place to start. So let's let's go let's go to my board here and let's start taking a look at some of these units, okay? And I'll explain to you where I got them all. Okay, so first of all, like there's several different kinds of infantry, right? So what I'm doing, like you kind of got to decide what you're going to do. Like you can just do a, go with all Axis and Allies infantry. That's these guys here, right? Those are the out of box Axis and Allies infantry that you probably use for years. And then you can put them all on the different types of chips. Like there's militia, there's mountain, uh, there's a marine chip here. Oh, it's just off camera there. There's, a, there's the marine chip there. Um, and there's Volkstrom. Like you, you can do that. You can just use one type of infantry and, and several different kind of chips. Another thing that you could do is use one kind of infantry. Uh, but the, the chips, like these chips cost $3.45 for five of them. So it adds up. Like this here, I think I've got probably be about 80 or more militia chips alone. And, you know, five mountain infantry chips for each one. Plus you gotta remember there's all the neutrals, right? The neutrals have all uh, militia and mountain infantry as well. Um, they don't have uh, Marines and they don't have airborne, but uh, they've got everything else, right? 
So uh, that's a lot of chips that you're going to need. So if you can't afford chips like that, here, take a look. This is my special forces unit that, that I, uh, my very first video was called special forces unit. And I, I invented a piece for access and allies. And what I did was I used this guy here. He's the, uh, from from historical board gaming he's uh the infantry the regular infantry from historical board gaming but what i did was i painted the base to to differentiate him from my other units because i wanted my custom or my uh special forces unit to stand up so what i did is i got one of those tiny little paint brushes and i painted the base with this red here and i did that with all of my my uh special forces you know like from all of the nations but what you could do like uh, you could have just regular axis and allies pieces or or what wherever you know regular pieces and then you could paint bases yellow and gray and brown and white you know like you could do it that way too that would be cheap uh one of those uh jars of paint there would um would probably do all of the yellows that you need for the entire game and one of those little jars of paint. And let me just take a look at this. It says that that's $3.99. And that's here in Canada. Down in the States, it would probably be $2.99 or maybe not even that much for that paint. And uh, and you you would be able to paint all your militia if you just painted the bases of them like I've painted the, the base of this infantry right here. Um, so that's another thing that you could do. Um, another thing that you can do is, is dig through your old, old Axis and Allies games. Like a lot of the pieces that I have even here for the Germans, I've gotten from uh, Revised. Uh, uh, you can take them from your classic game, uh, 1941. 1941 I bought just for the pieces in it. I've never played the game. I've never even opened the rule book. I just bought it to take the pieces out of it, you know, so I would have extra pieces. But anyway... Those are some ideas that you can do. And I'm going to link to a video by the Hilltop Pillbox. He's, uh, he's another YouTuber and he's in my home province of British Columbia. He's down in Abbotsford, which is outside, not too far outside of Vancouver, BC. So I'm going to link to him a video that he did recently. And, and his is uh, um, how to build this game as well, like where to find the pieces for that. Uh, so it's along the same lines as, as what I'm doing here. So I'm going to link to that video so you can get some more ideas on where to get pieces for it. But I'll tell you how I built my, this is how I built my Global War Armies. So these ones here, this first group of, group of uh, units in here, they're in Tripoli. Those are all custom infantry. Um, those are from Caesar Miniatures. Now I have custom infantry for all of my armies and I, I've, I had them for Axis and Allies as well. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm using those for regular infantry. There's several kinds of infantry. These are just regular infantry. Um, and you can tell the difference between these and all the other ones, even though some of the other sculpts are, are not the same, because they, they don't have round bases on them. Uh, none of the custom infantry I have from any of the nations have a round base on them. So that would be one way that you can differentiate them. And this particular set here are... Uh, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, German army with great coat or something like that. They're great, great coat German infantry anyway. Um, they have the long coats on them, so they're pretty neat. Um, so then the next thing that I have is militia. Uh, for the militia, what I'm using is the out of box, um, the out of box uh, infantry from Axis and Allies. And I did not paint these. Um, I wanted the militia to kind of stand out because. They weren't regular army. What they are is the people that live in that territory. You know, like uh, uh, the militia don't move. You can only build them in a place uh, like in your home kind of thing. And, and they don't move. They're just there for defense. They're cannon fodder as far as the game goes, right? But that's what they were, was just, you know, uh, people that, did, that weren't in the army or weren't in the Navy or the Air Force or anything like that. They were just citizens who uh, took up arms, right, to, to defend the homeland. Um, and they're the only ones in the game that I haven't painted. And everything else for my Germans, I've painted with uh, with this here, Tamiya color, and it's TS-40 metallic black. And you can't really tell from this, but uh, like uh, G.I. Joe made a video this week on, on painting his Germans, and he used the same one. And I, I noticed that I couldn't tell on his videos. But if you were here and you could see this, what you would see is it's not just black, but there's uh, 
silver highlights in it. So I really like that color. That's why I painted all of my um, stuff in. Like you can see there's not much difference between these and these. I would not have had to paint all my German units. I could have just painted my custom infantry because when you get them, I can't remember what color they are. They're brown or something like that. They're not the right color, right? But I painted them and I, I really like the color. So then I decided to paint the rest of my German units the same way, like all the tanks and, and artillery and planes and everything, just because it's such a nice color. And you don't get that as while well, you're watching it here on the video. I understand that. So all custom infantry for uh, regular infantry and then out of box uh, unpainted for militia and for Volkstrom. What Volkstrom are, are young men and old boys and they were, they're only in the home country. So uh, for Germany, here, let's just move this aside. Germany's home country is what's there in gray. And there's only four territories there. There's a fifth one up there, but you would not put a Volkstrom there because a Volkstrom is a militia that can move and they're not very powerful. They're, they're just cannon fodder as well. They're mostly for home defense, right? Like if, they, uh, if you've seen, um, movies where uh, there was uh, German kids that were defending, you know, and, and the Allied soldiers were uh, coming into Germany and, and kids were running out with machine guns. That's who the Volkstrom were. <laughs> so they were Nazis, right? Like they were, they were committed to what they were doing. They weren't just people taking up arms. They were, they were actually trained in everything, but they weren't, uh, they weren't uh, of age to, to be in the army. Let's put it that way. Or the Wehrmacht, they were, they were called. They were too young or too old, put it that way. Okay, so that's them. Uh, so that's the same sculpt that's unpainted because they are militia. So they're unpainted and, and they're uh, on a sculpt, sculpt that says Volkstrom on it. Now, another thing you'd notice here is that I actually glued these things onto here. And the reason I did that was that it would make it a lot easier for me to pick them up. Like instead of having, like this guy here is not, so I have to pick it up by the chip here, right? And then you got to kind of straighten them out as you sit them down, right? And like, it's kind of a pain in the ass and you, you end up dropping it a lot and knocking over a bunch of shit. But this guy, you just pick them up and move them, right? No problem. You pick them up by the head. So I like that. Now it would cost you a lot more money to do it that way. If you were going to put them on chips, um, like I had to buy a lot more militia chips to do that. Um, because, uh, like if you didn't, uh, glue them on, then you'd be able to use the same militia chips for any army, for neutrals, for Russians, for Americans, right? Like you would not need that many chips at once. But at some point in or another, you you may need a certain number of Germans or a certain number of Americans or whatever, right? So you have to you have to allow for that, and you have to have more chips because they're glued on. Plus, I've got extra militia chips, a few extra. Just in case uh, I didn't get enough of, of, of one of the nations, right? Then I, I've got a couple of extra and I can just put a dude on there. And the next one here, this is uh, the one that I did get. Like you could get uh, historical board gaming. They did come out with uh, militia units and they came from the same set as this guy here. This is a mountain infantry um, and I put him on a mountain chip. And the reason I actually put him on a chip is because... Um, with using custom infantry like I am and all the different kind of infantry pieces, uh, he could get lost. Like I could see myself being able to, to pick out the mountain infantry, no problem because it's my game and you know, and I'm used to looking at it, right? But the thing is somebody coming in, uh, even you coming to play a game at my house and, and not certain um, who, who uh, which sculpts are, are which units. And so that's why I, I, I got the mountain sculpt and the mountain chip. And again, glued on. Uh, so then we've got Marines. The Marines are on a, a white Marine chip. And what I'm using for Marines is the World War One, like the 1914 pieces. Um, and you know, like they, they might have the wrong gun and stuff, but they're actually really nice pieces. I was gonna use these for the mountain ones because they got lots of gear on them, like a mountain troop would, right? But um, I decided uh, that I like really like the mountain pieces when they came out. And I've already had a lot of these painted, these uh, World War I pieces from, from my various armies. And, and I didn't have a Marine thing yet. So I thought, hey, these guys look like Marines all of a sudden. And I glued them on. <laughs> so that's what I'm using for them. And then Historical Board Gaming has these. Uh, these are, I, I'm probably going to butcher the name here. 
false mirror, false me, me or something like that. I don't know. I, I can't pronounce it, but that's the German or yeah, that's the German airborne. So they, they have the German airborne pieces. Um, and like I said, you don't have to use these. You could, you could just get the airborne chips and you could put the regular Axis and Allies pieces on if you want. And then eventually someday, maybe you can afford to buy five of these, right? But that's about what all you need is about five of them. And, and uh, you buy the chips and you get five of them. And, and there you go, you have your airborne. And then there's this guy here. He's not in the regular rules. It's this dude with the Panzerfaust. I haven't figured out what uh, exactly he does yet, but I have a bunch of them became in those, because they came in those sets, those sets that I showed you. So, you know, like uh, he, he'll have a role in the game too, and I'll figure that out at some point. And you can also get other chips, like there's all kinds of SS chips, you know, that, that have the different divisions on them and everything like that. I got this one as a Gestapo chip. There's all kinds of chips that you can get um, to put under your units, whether they're uh, airborne or whether they're army or whether they're armor, you know, artillery, you can put chips under just about anything. So that's the, that's the infantry class. Uh, there's different classes of units and that's the infantry class right there. I'm thinking with uh, this guy, I just wanted to really show you the, the paint on there. Because, and to, so that might give you an idea, but I'm thinking at some point I might put this guy into the game, like make up rules for him. The, uh, special forces unit it won't be the same as the Axis and Allies game like I'm, I'm gonna change them up a bit you know for one thing there's transport planes in this game whereas uh, there was no transport planes in Axis and Allies so you know, it would have to be different and everything but that's down the road though I'm gonna try to learn to play this game out of box first for the most part okay moving on uh, we have the historical board gaming complexes and I've done videos about these in the past and actually gave away a set uh, well, Doug gave away a set. Uh, I, I ran the contest and he came up with a set. So you got your German major factory and your German minor factory. And then this is uh, from Ebard. Ebard is a guy that's on AxisAndAllies.org and he has a store on Shapeways. This is the Reichstag building. So I'm going to throw this on Berlin just to mark the capital. So moving on. Uh, this uh, we're going to go for the artillery class and that's the, this line in the back here okay this is the regular artillery and that's the out-of-box artillery from global 40 uh, or I, I guess it would be Europe uh, 1940 wouldn't it be uh, axis and allies and that is uh, 10.5 centimeter axis or 10.5 centimeter howitzer artillery um, so that that will be the the regular artillery piece in the game for the Germans and the one next to it here is uh, if you take a look at up here, uh, let me see. It would be the very first one on there. Oh, I got, I've got the it, it uh, zoomed in a bit there. So uh, right there, advanced artillery. That's what this piece will, will represent. Is the advanced artillery, and that is from historical board gaming. You get these five for three dollars and forty five cents uh, in the battle pieces section, uh, the German one. And that would be a Morser 210 millimeter gun. And then the next one is also from Axis and Allies. It's out of box from Europe 1940. And that's the 88 millimeter gun. Uh, that, that will be your anti-aircraft gun. They also have anti-aircraft guns um, from uh, the set. It's called a 1936 base set. And there's a bunch of things in there that, that you could use for this game. I already had most of the pieces already, so I didn't bother buying them, except for that mountain infantry that I showed you there. I really liked him, so I bought him. Okay, so this piece here, this is a self-propelled uh, artillery. And I got him from America, uh, the America game. And I gotta tell you, there's a wealth of pieces in there. Um, you can use just about every piece that, that historical board gaming sells. They give you rules for each and, each and every one of those pieces. Uh, the 3D printed pieces and the battle pieces and things like that. And even the America pieces. And they give you rules like they attack, they defend, they, they move, uh, you know, certain amounts. And they can be built at a certain point in time, right? Like 1943 or whatever. Um, but that is... Uh, the uh, self-propelled artillery and I believe that thing's going to go like two spaces all these other ones go one space and that one will go two spaces 
and uh, it's called a GW Panther, and that's from the America game. That's an out-of-box America piece. They, they also have uh, an expansion set, and you'll see some of those pieces later. Um, they are uh, even like uh, they're from they're one of the expansion sets you can get. Ah, had to take a drink. <laughs> okay, so then we move on to the. Uh, these are actually from armor class, but these are like the mechanized infantry and the motorized. Now, one of the biggest things that I got stuck on. It took me a while to figure out the difference between motorized and mechanized, and um, and then when I did find out the, what the difference was, uh, I was disappointed to find out that you can't actually find any motorized German pieces. There's none uh, that I could find. Maybe I think uh, there is some in, what is it, uh, Battle of the Bulge, Axis and Allies Battle of the Bulge. They had trucks in there. I, if those trucks had tires on them, then um, then those would be motorized. But that's the difference. The motorized infantry are trucks with tires on them. And you can see these ones here. Like, take a look. They're, that's a half track, eh? You see the, the tracks on the back there? There's tires in the front, but there's tracks on the back. And this is an Opel multi A truck, if that's how you pronounce it. And you get that uh, at historical board game. You get a, uh, four of these in each one of those sets that I showed you. Like uh, I said, start with the set. So you get four of these in there. Now, um, like I said, though, there isn't, uh, there are no trucks. So I'm going to have to suspend my belief in reality that, that those are tracks. And I'm using these for motorized infantry for the Germans. Um, and there's a, a big difference between the two, between motorized and mechanized. The numbers are, are vastly different. Um, what these are really good for, like these are motorized infantry. You can tow, um, you can tow your, your, uh, your artillery pieces with them so that that will make the artillery go two spaces. Not just the artillery, but also the anti-aircraft. And one of the big things that I will reference this a lot, Global 40, because I, I, I assume that most people have come from that game to this game. They played that game and they somehow found this game as a result of it. And so I will re uh, reference that game a lot, uh, the difference between them. Um, it, one of the things in that game is that when you're using anti-aircraft artillery, that's only for defense, right? Like when planes fly into a territory and you have one of those, then those things can um, fire at three of the planes, right? Well, the, the rules are the same in this one. It fires at three planes, but you can take it into a territory on attack and attack planes in there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, I mean, the, these uh, that makes these motorized in, in infantry, these trucks here, it makes them very valuable because you can tow uh, any one of these three pieces here. You can tow them into battle, right? Two spaces. Okay, then you got mechanized infantry. Now, these two mechanized infantry are the same thing. They're, they're uh, what's the name of those? Here, let me just look at my piece of paper here. SDKFZ251. Now, the one that is kind of hollowed out here, that's the HBG piece. And it's a little nicer than this one. Uh, this is the Axis and Allies from Global 40. Um, but it's exactly the same piece. So if you've got lots of these, then, then that'll work just fine. Uh, these guys aren't going to fight any harder for you. But if you got if you got extra money, these ones are nicer that you can get from historical board gaming. Um, and then uh, I was showing you that chart there, the the uh, technology chart. There is also, if you notice, number two on there was advanced mechanized. That would be this thing here. And this is from the Out of Box America game. This is Out of Box, uh, the mechanized unit in that game. So, like I said, there's a wealth of pieces in there. Like you're thinking, where am I going to find two different mechanized infantry, right? Well, there you go. Um, if you have that America game, then there's lots of pieces in there. There's heavy, heavier, um, heavy tanks and, you know, like just everything. The so that's where I got the self-propelled artillery. There's self-propelled anti-aircraft guns. There's all kinds of stuff in there. There's uh, SS Panzer Grenadiers, uh, like nice infantry scope. Um, just tons of stuff. Okay, so let's move on to the next, and we're, we're getting into the armor class here. That was the artillery class, and also the, the these things down here. These would be considered in the armor class. But uh, moving on with the armor class. Um, they, they finally just put these out, 
these are the the, the cavalry pieces um, and uh, they're pretty nice pieces it's kind of funny though that they're they're a lot smaller than the infantry well it kind of it kind of weirds you out you know like you got a huge dude and a tiny little tiny little dude on a horse but uh, you know that's okay too because if you if he was uh, if he was much bigger than the dude then he'd hardly fit into a territory right I mean, this is the big map. If you had it on a little map, then it would be uh, it would be even harder to fit it in the territory. But anyway, these are really nice sculpts, and you can get them in all the different colors. And uh, uh, like everything they sell, it's uh, five of them for three dollars and forty five cents. And if you can't afford that, um, well, you got these cavalry chips. But actually, the cavalry chips cost exactly the same amount of money. So you can put these cavalry chips under a dude, and that would be your your cavalry. Now, you, there's these other things here. This is the armored cars. You also get these armored cars in uh, in that set I was showing you, uh, the set uh, of Germans. And so, uh, well, like I was, I was saying there, you, you buy two of those sets and, and they're on sale. So that would give you four of those cars. Then you just need to buy a set of five of those cars and then there you go, boom, you're, you're done with your armored cars. And that's the same with a lot of the other um, units in that set uh, you get like uh, two light tanks in each set so all you need to do is buy one set of light tanks after that and you're done with your light tanks and um, and set and so on uh, with the armored car like these two units here the, the the cavalry and the armored car exactly the same numbers you know and people have commented on that online that, that and there's actually a thread started today about that and uh, they're exactly the same number so why would you buy one over the other you know um, what I'm planning on doing like I looked these things up online a while ago these these uh, armored cars because I was wondering what the hell did they use armored cars for apparently what they used them for was scout vehicles like they were for reconnaissance um, but that's not reflected in in the rules that, that they've, they've given you for these units and so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to say that uh, you know the, the numbers are the same for it, but that it, uh, you can pair these one to one with an artillery piece, and the artillery will be plus one on attack or defense, uh, because you know like they, they they go find out where the enemy enemy position is, and they relay that to your artillery battery, and your artillery battery knows where to uh, send their shells right, and so I mean that's what they would have been for, and and so why not do something like that. To differentiate these from from these other ones and these other ones i'm gonna have to give that a little bit more thought you know like give them give them something to do as well otherwise you might as well just buy our all, all armored cars and no cavalry right like you want each piece to, to be to to be useful in the game okay so moving on we have light tanks and there's two different light tanks here um like the in that set that i was showing you um let me just look here uh, da, 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 da. There's the 38T light tank. I think that's the one that you get in the set. And then the other one is a, a, a Panzer II light tank. So that's these two tanks in front. And they're about the same size. One's got a longer barrel and this one's got two barrels on it. So uh, if you buy two of those sets, you're gonna have four light tanks. And then you buy a set of light tanks and you'll get five more. Then Germany will have nine light tanks and, and that should be good enough, right? Um, and then in, there's the medium tanks. Now this one here you probably recognize easily. That's the Panther a medium tank from Axis and Allies. This one here is the Panther II, and that's from that's the out of box tank from America. Um, so and it's really nice. Like it's it's a lot nicer. I, I use these in my Axis and Allies game too. It's just a lot nicer sculpt than than the than the Axis and Allies ones. Like they're kind of generic, right? HPG sculpts are, are much nicer. Uh, the reason you use Axis and Allies ones is, is to lower the cost of the game for you, right? Um, if you can afford to use all HPG pieces, then, then go for it, you know? Um, and the other medium tank there is the Panther III, and that's that's uh, that's a historical historical board gaming piece, like just one of their regular pieces, right? You can see they're slightly smaller than the other sculpts, though. Their, their tank sculpts are slightly smaller than the other medium tanks. Um, and now there is another um, another unit in in the armor class that uh, isn't really in in the, the stock game, the the normal 1936 game, but that uh, you can add to it like a lot of things. 
you know, like uh, the self-propelled artillery that I had there. So this is a tank destroyer. And I've got tank destroyers for, I think, just about all the nations because they come in those sets. And I think there was two in each set, so that means I have four of these. These are uh, a Stube tank destroyer. It's a uh, Stube 3G. That, 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 that's the unit name. And so, uh, and they, they will have their own stats. And I'm not going to get too far in, into what these things do right now. This is mostly just to uh, show you wh where to get them. So you get that set, you'll get two of these in each set that you buy. So moving on, we've got the heavy tanks. Now this one here is a Tiger tank and you'll get this from Historical Board Gaming. Again, five for $3.45. And in, in behind it here, this is from the Bring in the Heavy set, the Might, Might of the Reich. This is a, uh, a King Tiger. <laughs> That's really powerful. Uh, like it, when you see the numbers on it, those blow you away. But uh, like it, there's rules, like I said with America, there's rules for all the America pieces. Now you have to buy, I think it's three or maybe four of these uh, tanks before you're allowed to buy one of these ones. Uh, and before you buy these ones, you have to develop heavy armor uh, technology, right? And once you develop heavy armor technology, then you, you'll buy one of these a turn until you bought enough and then you can start buying these ones, these King Tigers, and they're very powerful. So that is the armor class unit and General Hand Grenade needs to take another drink. Ah, Mike's Hard Lemonade, if you were wondering. Black Cherry. Okay, let's go to, let's go to the air class. Okay, first one here you probably recognize. That's the out of box fighter from uh, from Europe, 1940. That's uh, the BF-109 fighter, and that comes into Axis and Allies, uh, 1940. The one beside it is um, that is the FW-190, and that's from 1941 Axis and Allies. And the one beside that, that this would be. These are both fighters, right? Okay, so then you get to the tactical bomber, and that's a JU-87 Stuka tactical bomber, and that's from uh, Global 19 or Europe 1940, um, Axis and Allies. You can also get those from historical board gaming, and, and they're a bit nicer as well. Like everything, like you know, like the detail on the tank versus uh, the Axis and Allies tanks, they're even nicer. But uh, if you already have the Axis and Allies pieces, that's all you need to play this game. And beside that, the one on the far right here, um, you're going to need those. And, and those also, I think those come in that set that I showed you. These are medium bombers. You don't get these in, in, in Axis and Allies. Um, so a medium bomber would be more like, uh, more like a tactical bomber in Axis and Allies. Like the tactical bomber in this game is, is different than what it is in Axis and Allies. Uh, you don't do any uh, bombing of facilities, I don't think. Maybe you do. But anyway, like these are more for targeting ground units and, and uh, like what they, what they were supposed to be for. Uh, you might be able to, to attack facilities with it, I don't know. But a medium bomber is, is more like that, like you would be attacking strategic bombing and tactical bombing with a medium bomber. Plus it can also take part in, in regular combat. And there are other rules uh, that, that we'll get into, uh, um, like in the first round, uh, fighters, the, the, the hits on fighters will go towards other aircraft if it's possible. Like if there's other aircraft in the battle, then the fighters will, will, will um, put their hits onto, uh, onto, onto the air units of the other side before they take out the ground units. So let's just move down here. And... Uh, Okay, so this one here, like uh, the transport planes are pretty nice for what you can buy in um, in, uh, in historical board gaming. But I had some already that I was going to use. Like these are the, the strategic bomber from uh, 1941. And because I already had those, I thought, why not put them to use, right? Um, it doesn't really look like much of a, a strategic bomber anyway. So I'm making those uh, strategic bombers from 1941. I am making those my transport planes in this game for the Germans. Um, 
me just look here. Uh, HE-111 is what it is. That medium bomber was a DO-17. Um, and then there's the regular bomber from Axis and Allies, uh, Europe 1940. That is still the strategic bomber for me in this game. And it is a JU-88 bomber. Um, the next thing we have there, uh, when you develop uh, heavy bombers, if you develop heavy bombers, you need uh, some kind of sculpt for that. So this is from the Bring in the Heavy set, uh, America set, um, uh, from Historical Board Game. Historical Board Gaming. I'll, I'll show you more of the America pieces uh, once I get done going through all of these pieces, just to show you what other kind of pieces you'll find in there. But uh, that is uh, not out of box, but that is uh, um, from the Might of the Right. Might of the Reich, it's called, the, uh, the expansion set. Now beside it, here we have the, uh, the jet fighter. And that is the out of box uh, jet fighter from America. And it is, it is the, Hor no, it's the ME262H1. And that's a jet fighter from America. Now you will use that when you develop uh, jet aircraft technology. If you develop jet aircraft technology, and the one beside it here is is also a jet fighter, but it's it's one of those uh, it looks like one of those stealth fighters, and they didn't actually have these in World War II, but they were developing developing them. I actually seen a, a documentary where they they found the remnants of one in a barn in Germany, and they were wondering how far they were off from uh, from developing it. But because this game starts in 1946, the America game. The, uh, the people at Historical Board Gaming were able to extrapolate and say, okay, they won the war, so where would their weaponry have gone next, right? Not 20 years in the future, but like next year kind of thing. And so you can use that, um, you can use that uh, uh, unit in this game as well as, as, you, as you can with all the American units. So that's the Horton HO-229 jet fighter, and that's from America. And then the next one there, it's, uh, I've got uh, seaplanes for all of the nations. I was going to, I was buying them over the past year and a bit for my Axis and Allies game, and I never did put them in the Axis and Allies game. But in this game, I am gonna put them in. And I think what I'm gonna do, because they're not in the regular game, uh, uh, they were there since um, way before the war started, uh, seaplanes. They, they, they were using, all the nations were using seaplanes for a long time. And so I'm going to add one seaplane and one seaplane base to each nation to start the game with, like in the starting setup. Each one of them is going to start with a seaplane. And I have two for each nation, so uh, they'll get one. And then if they want another one, they'll have to buy that one. Um, but we'll get into the rules for those uh, down the road. So what's now we get into... So that's the, that's the air class. So there's tons of planes there. You can imagine how many magnets... I, I can't I can't even tell you how many freaking magnets I put on there man I was I was I was sick and tired of magnets by the time I was done uh, must have been well over 300 like probably 350 magnets okay so um, naval units okay battleships uh, so you got the Bismarck battleship and I've got three different ones here or is it four uh, just from different games right so uh, like this one here is a lot smaller I think this is probably from revised so I could make this into a different unit if I wanted, like I could call that a battle cruiser or something, you know, uh, give it give it a different set of values. But it doesn't matter where you get your, your battleship from. The, the, you, I'm sure you have German battleships if you have Axis and Allies or whatever. Like I think one of them here is from 1941 and one of them is historical board gaming and one of them is from uh, Europe 1940. Um, so the battleships are not hard to find okay the aircraft carrier germans uh, i hate the aircraft carriers they give them in, in the games like the the europe 1940 carrier uh, a plane doesn't stay on it they're so thin and i realize you know there's a reason okay that's what they look like and whatever i don't give a shit like what i want is something for my plane to sit on right I'm playing a game here. So this one here, uh, the best one I found for, for Germany as far as playability goes is the 1941. Uh, it comes out of the 1941 and it's actually a, 
a Japanese one, and they did that in 1941 game. They, they like the the Japanese have tiger tanks, <laughs> you know, like it just doesn't make any sense. But anyway, it's just a it's just a sculpt, right? Like if you really wanted to get technical, you can't use this one. But I don't give a shit about that. I just want an aircraft carrier that's that's you know painted in the German colors. So that's an Akagi aircraft carrier from the 1941, and then this other one here, the Seidlitz or Seidlitz or something. I'm not very good with German, okay, so uh, I'm better with French. Um, these have, have a big role in the game, um, not necessarily for the Germans, like, uh, but for the Japanese and the Americans and, and the Italians, um, they're, they're light uh, carriers, and they will take one plane. Like These are kind of like the ones in Axis and Allies, uh, uh, Global 40, where uh, you'd put two planes on them, and uh, they're a capital ship, so they take two hits and everything. But these only take one hit, they're, and they're light carriers. They're a lot cheaper uh, to buy, and they're a lot easier to buy too. Like, let's just take a look at the thing here. You have to buy your units and stages, right? So if you bought a carrier, it was in, it's in stage four, whereas a light carrier is only in stage three. So, uh, you know, like you go to stage two and then to stage one and you put it on, right? Um, but, uh, so you could get it on the board one turn faster if you're buying light carriers, right? And next we have the cruisers. So we have the hipper class cruiser, and that's the one that you get from uh, the Axis and Allies 1940 uh, Europe game, uh, the hipper class. And then this one here is, uh, I think it's a light cruiser. It's from, uh, <laughs> you know, like I got all these pieces and I just, you know, I just threw them in there, right? And then I take it out and I'm reading through them. And holy crap, that's a light one. Um, so yeah, that's a Leipzig light cruiser and that's a historical board gaming piece. Um, then the next one is a 1934A class destroyer. That's from 1940 Axis and Allies. Um, and then uh, this this here, like these things here, I, oh, <laughs> I'm not even in the picture anymore. These things here, I hate these things. These are the 1940 uh, Axis and Allies transports. I friggin hate them. Like, uh, you, you want, you could use these for, you could use these for torpedo boat destroyers if you want, because they kind of look like a historical board gaming bo torpedo boat destroyer um, piece. So anyway, there you go. <laughs> but what I did, uh, one of the reasons I, I liked that 1941 game for the pieces was uh, because of the carrier that I showed you, but also these are not nicer. These are the transports that you get for um, for 1941, it's actually a Japanese transport. Like I said, they they uh, they they share the units. They're like Axis units or Allies units, right? Well, this is a, a Japanese um, transport, um, and also historical board gaming has nice transports. They're way nicer than this stupid one here. But like I said, you could use that for a torpedo boat destroyer if you wanted. And we're getting near the end. We just got a couple more. Um, there's the submarine here and that's from 1940 and I'm not a big fan of this sub like I might just go out and get myself some historical board gaming ones you know like uh, these just fall over way too easy like you got eight of these on the board half of them are like this all the time right well you know half of them are just laying there like that right um, th so that's the 1940 uh, type 7 class sub from Axis and Allies and uh, so the coastal sub, now remember I told you for these guys, we looked at the map or the chart there, you only need one of each of these. So there's your coastal sub and it's an actual coastal sub. You can get them from historical board gaming. Um, and then this piece here, this is, uh, this is actually a 1914 cruiser. And that's what I'm using for torpedo boat destroyers for all of my armies. All of them are using this piece here because I started collecting all these pieces before they put out their their new pieces, right? Their 1936 base set. And I really like them anyway. And you know, like what they were was a World War One boat. Well, this is a World War One boat. It's supposed to be a cruiser, but I like the sculpt. And so I'm going with these for my, um, my torpedo boat destroyers. So what else have we got? Oh, we got one more piece here to look at. Well, actually, a series of pieces, and I've showed you these before, so I'm not going to tell you what they are, uh, other than to say that these are my Africa Corps, my German Africa Corps, and I did get all the Italian pieces, so I don't need to use these as Italians. So this is uh, a set, a various set, and they're painted beautifully. 
by my my good friend um, Sire Blood down in uh, Southern California there he painted all of them really really nicely there's a video that I did a uh, month ago six weeks ago I don't know something like that anyway so those are my Africa core pieces and they're also going into my German box so where are we now um, there's my box over there for Germany so I've got one of each of those taken out and on, on the board. I'm using the, the nice roundels from Historical Board Gaming. And I'm not sure how many factories you need. Uh, if I find out down the road, then I'll let you know. Um, I was showing you today on a video that I did about the war room that I had extra factories. Because I didn't know how many I'm going to need, right? So um, when I find out, uh, you know, like I, you're probably going to have to play at least 10 games, right? And even then you might have a weird game where you have even more that you need. But I'm not certain how many I'm going to need yet, so I, uh, I'll just have to play it by ear. I don't know how many, what to tell you about those. So here's my box for my America game. Let me just tilt this down a bit here. And there's all kinds of pieces. And I still got all these things, my Field Marshal Games uh, um, flight stands. I thought I might as well use them for those, since I'm using the good flight stands from... Uh, from uh, my buddy in Toronto there from the cliffside bunker he, he's making those beautiful flight stands that you've seen all the planes on there war torn is his name okay so um, these have lots of great sculpts in them not these the, the, these are something else uh, but uh, all these other ones like just tons of, and, and like I said you, you, there's rules for all of these pieces that you can use there's those uh, Horton uh, fighters and the jet fighters there and you know like all kinds of, of, of uh, heavy tanks and stuff and light tanks and tank destroyers, you know, like just tons of them. Oops. Like look at these things, just gorgeous, right? But yeah, and there, there's, the, there's the artillery. The problem with these is that they come in great and I wish they wouldn't have done that. There's the self-propelled artillery right there, or no, I mean self-propelled anti-aircraft gun. So you could also put these into the game. They, they have rules for these to play with 1936 as well. Um, and there's the, the Panther II tanks that you've seen one that I had painted up. That's the medium tank there. And this is what they use for a heavy tank. I think it's an E100 or something like that. I can't remember. And the big, the Moss tank, just, just ginormous. So that's a, that's a super heavy tank. But anyway, uh, with the America set, like uh, you get lots of them. But uh, the problem with the America set is it's only Germany, Japan, and then green pieces. So uh, you probably use them for America. Like they, they were supposed to represent the Allies, but really, I mean, they, they look like American pieces, right? And most of them were. Um, I know the jet fighter was a, a British design, but um, but there's lots of pieces that you can get from a, from the America game, or even if you just get uh, the expansion sets from the America game. And there's three expansion sets. There's one for the Germans, one for the Japanese, and one for the Americans. So, have I covered everything yet? Let's, uh, I had this zoomed in. Let's just zoom back out again. I wanted to show you up close what they all look like. So that's why I, uh, that's why I had them all zoomed in. And that's why and I'm not used to doing videos like that where it's zoomed in like that. So let me just uh, take a look at the website here again. So uh, let's just look here. Um, so like the America game here. Ooh. So the America game here, like that's $99. And it's usually $120. And there's tons of them in stock. And it's a good game. Like it's not like you're just buying it for the sculpts, right? It's actually a really good game. Um, not as good as this game and not as good as Global 40, but you know, like I'm just used to bigger games, right? But there's all kinds of pieces that you can get. And, uh, in, um, you can buy in, in the expansion sets for America or the expansion sets for, um, for Global War. This is the Global War expansion sets. So here, like here's the, the might of the Reich here that we were just looking at for the Germans, right? So let's just look over here. Oop. So there you go, that's, uh, those are the pieces that I was just showing you, right? So there's all these, like I'm using the heavy bombers there, 
and uh, the uh, King Tigers are, uh, we're using. All kinds of pieces that you can find in there in the America game. And uh, I think the, the German set is the biggest one, but like there's there's not nearly as many. Here's the, the American one right here. Um, now you can buy two, two sizes of these sets here. Like you can buy them, um, you can buy two pieces each or five pieces. Like this set here has five pieces each, right? This is the American set right here. So like uh, these are what I'm using for the American heavy bombers. Just gorgeous bombers are, you'll see them when I, when I show the Americans. But uh, yeah, like the, those are, you know, there's tank destroyers there and, you know, there's lots of pieces you can use. Anyway, I don't know what else to tell you there. Uh, I'm not going to go through the rules with these guys because uh, that's not what this video is about. This video is just about showing you where you can get these pieces. So I'm going to move on to the next nation tomorrow. I, uh, I actually have company right now, but like I set all this up and I was all ready to go and then I got company. But it's just my son and his friend. We're, we're watching fights tonight, um, uh, UFC fights tonight, and, and they're out there watching the preliminaries right now, and I'm gonna head out there and watch them. And while I'm doing that, I'll, I'll upload this video. But um, thanks for joining me here in the war room. And, and um, if you have any questions, you can you can put them in the comment section. Um, when I have questions, I just I just uh, send Doug a text message or an email, um, or uh, I can send Will a, an email. He's actually the rules guy, so uh, I'll be doing that a lot. So if you have a question and I don't know the answer, I'll try to find the answer for you. And also, there are some players that um, that are following me now on my channel here. They're very experienced at this game. And so um, I'm hoping that if I make any mistakes or if you have any questions, that they will look at those and, and, and they will help me to answer them because they know this game a lot more than I do. Um, I'm talking about Rank Carcass and uh, some guys like that. Um, they've really been helping me out as I've been trying to learn this game already. I've been reading their posts uh, on the Global War forums and on the Axis and Allies, uh, org forums and uh, I'm learning a lot from those guys and, and so hopefully they will help us out and we will all learn this game together and now that you know that it's not uh, impossible to build a global war army you can go get yourself a map and start buying yourself some pieces you'd be surprised at how many pieces you already have and don't forget to check the the, the uh, section just below the video there um, I'm going to link to the Hillbox, Hilltop Pillboxes video on where to get pieces for the game as well. Um, this is just some of the ideas and he will give you more ideas. And you, you can come up with ideas of your own, like uh, you might have pieces from other games that, uh, that uh, I've never even heard of or thought of. So anyway, that's, that's Germany everyone. So take care, General Hand Grenade out.